Welcome, Dr. Gaynor. So good to have you here. Great to be with you. Well, I have to ask you the obvious question. You're a successful oncologist, medical physician, and you do you play Tibetan singing bowls. How did you discover them? Well, the Tibetan singing bowls actually were introduced to me by a Tibetan monk who was a patient of mine in the early 1990s. And um, he was suffering from a very rare illness affecting his heart. I tell the story in the book. but. He gave me as a gift one of these uh, Tibetan singing bowls, which has an amazing sound. Um, these Tibetan bowls are made of anywhere from seven to ten different metals. They each vibrate with a different frequency. And so when you listen to them, it's almost like listening simultaneously to dozens of church bells. Um, so I'll just strike Let's one and it. let you hear what it sounds like. And you can just hear the different tones, the overtones uh, in this. And what almost everybody describes uh, this sound as is uh, being able to feel it as well as hear it. And that shouldn't be surprising because our bodies are composed of 70% water. So you actually, water is an excellent conductive medium for sound and vibration. So you actually are hearing with your body as well as with your ears when you listen to these types of instruments. But I'm also triple board certified in internal medicine, um, in medical hematology and medical oncology. So in my practice, I really uh, do an integrative approach, which is combining Western and Eastern medicine. So Western medicine will look at the manifestation we call illness and how do we treat it. So if a woman has breast cancer, for instance, we may work with surgery, radiation, chemo, hormones, and I believe that's important, but that's dealing with the manifestation. You have a patient that came to you, she was dying of cancer, and we are fortunate to have Marissa Harris here with us today on New Morning. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Marissa first came to me with advanced cancer and was given a uh, very poor prognosis. How long ago was it that you found out you were dying of cancer? Seven years ago. And then what happened when you heard that? And how did you find Dr. Gaynor? Well, I couldn't believe it, of course. I mean, you hear one day you think you're well, and then you're told that you have stage four cancer. And they said it was medically incurable and medically untreatable. And there was absolutely nothing that I could do. And I, but obviously you didn't stop there. <laughs> well, I did initially. And I started, in fact, putting my affairs together. And then I thought, you know, I, I've never given up before in life. I mean, I've had a job where a problem was something to be solved and not just to give up. And um, so I, I, someone gave me the name of um, Mitchell Gaynor. And uh, I was told that he would be able to help me. And neither my husband nor I really believed that, but we went to see him, and he said to me, there is so much that you can do for yourself. Um, it's interesting that you didn't even believe uh, before you went to him. Well, I was at There Sloan, was something there, obviously. I was at Sloan Kettering, and I grew up hearing that this is the best cancer hospital in the world, and the doctors were very caring, and they were very sorry. But they just said it was just too far gone, and there was just nothing, not even chemotherapy. And we're sitting in this room, and Dr. Gaynor came, and he was carrying this bowl, and I had no idea what the bowl was for. I mean, I just you thought, are we having a meal or well, something? Well, I thought, yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that he must be cooking a huge pot of pasta for <laughs> us or something like that. You begin to realize that you, in fact, I, in fact, had control over my ability to I heal. I've seen such improvement, a miraculous improvement that was documented by blood tests and also just how I felt. I felt more energized. My stomach, which had been hurting me for years, was feeling so much better. one of the important things about music is music is a form of medicine and there are numerous scientific studies that show how music can affect every body system it can bolster your immune system it lowers stress hormones like cortisol it affects brainwave patterns it even affects the heart 
and the electromagnetic field generated by your heart is sixty times stronger than that generated by your brain so it's really your heart that's controlling so many people will say they feel music with their heart and it doesn't matter the type of music it can be classical music it can be hymns it can be chanting all of those things are profoundly effective and they all affect your heart rate your breathing patterns your brainwave patterns <laughs>